And we are one-on-one -on -one today with uh, Rick Hughes of Canadian heavy metal band Sword. Good day, Rick. How are you? I'm fine, Mitch. How are you? Good, good. So, you know, <laughs> Sword, Sword is one of these sort of classic Canadian bands that came out of the 80s. And, you know, one of the, one of the most memorable things you did was that tour with Metallica, the Master of Puppets tour in 86. Let, let, let's start there. How was it being on that tour with a band which essentially were, were rookies? I mean, they weren't exactly Metallica of what we think of now. What, what was it like it was in 86? A, well, one thing's for sure is that for us was the best of time. For them, it was the worst of time. Huh? If you, if, yeah, if you go back to to when we actually toured with them, yeah. um, it's it's it, it's at it's exactly when um, uh, Cliff Burton died. Exactly. Oh, that's the, right. The way it happened, yeah, oh yeah. The way it happened is that we, we got approached by the management because Burton was still touring with them. They were happy. Uh, they were they've been playing together for ever, so they were like brothers, right? So, so they start to, to to do like um, we're watching like TV commercials for the shows, and we're announcing sword with Metallica, and and everybody would say, "Hey, you, you must be really happy. The show's coming in like a month." Yeah, 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 yeah. We're real happy, but but then the sad news came that that, that there was an accident, so that they had to cancel everything. Wow. Yeah, that's the way it happened. So, 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 so we go got back to the rehearsals. We got back to to doing our stuff. <laughs> and uh, and and uh, at that time, this is this is a this is a long time ago. A lot of people don't remember that there was a question that that was the end of Metallica right there because that's right. You know, yeah, yeah. It's like Zeppelin. You know, Zeppelin without bottom. Some people knew. They knew. There was no way to replace him. So Cliff was a really hard member to replace. So they did it, and then they announced the tour. But listen to this match. It was on TV. There was an advertisement for the show. And then we had a news that, that uh, James Hetfield had broke his arm. <laughs> the guy broke his arm. He was doing, like, uh, at that time, uh, skateboarding. Right, right, right. So he had a skateboarding accident. He broke his arm. So, again, the tour was... was so, so I listened. When it finally happened, it was like we couldn't... The first show I did, I was on stage. I said to myself, okay, now I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it must have been great, though. I mean, could, could you sense that, that Metallica was going to... Was, was headed for this stardom? Did, did, could you sense that they were going to just survive and just be this larger than life kind of band? Oh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. Anybody could have thought the the, the future for them because it, it 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 became so big, so important, so so Metallica. You know, a world without Metallica is like unimaginable. You know that, that that's where the metal is and is best is with Metallica, yeah. period. Even today, the stuff that comes out today, sometimes when it's really, really good, you hear intros, you go, wow, is there a new Metallica single? <laughs> yeah, you do. No, it's a matter of... Huh? You, you do, actually. There's a lot of influence with, with Metallica, even today. Ah, uh, they were the best, Mitch. They were the best. And the way it happened with Sword is that they've always been a band to support uh, uh, new artists. So, so... Lars was having dinner with somebody, and, and that person gave him a tape of swords metalized. Right. <laughs> a tape of swords metalized. Right. We're from that era, Mitch. We're all guys, eh? I know. That's what, so, well, that's what I want to get to. I want to get to metalized, but finish, finish the story first. Okay, so so um, so he got back to the to, to the tour bus with the, the metalized cassette, and they played that face A, face B, face A, face B, because they told us the story after. So we were here in Quebec listening to uh, Master of Puppets in our car, face A, face B, face A, <laughs> doing basically the same stuff. And, and we got a phone call from their management telling, hey, Metallica really wants them to want you to support them on, 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 on their Canadian dates and maybe more and stuff. And we fell off our chairs, you know, and that's the way it happened. Wow. So, so let's go back yeah. to Metalized. You know, he, this album came out almost 30 years ago. 
a great yep. Canadian, you know, metal album. But but how do you get into metal? I mean, you know, you're French Canadian. You're from Montreal. You know, at the time, Bon Jovi was hot. Def Leppard was hot. Motley Crue was hot. How did you get together and and break into the market? Only you, Mitch, can ask a question with so much depth. Because <laughs> I know, seriously, this is a really, really good question. Why? Well, we were influenced. There was like a lot of bands being influenced by different bands, you know? Mm -hmm. Us, it was Sabbath, mm -hmm. Maiden, Priest. Sabbath, Maiden, Priest. Don't ask me why. Those were the bands that when we were, when we were like in the garage, when we were with friends at parties, you know, and, and, and we would jam, we'd do like victim of change, um, uh, lots of Black Sabbath, you know, uh, Sweet Leaf, Paranoid, uh, Fairies Wear Boots, War Pigs. <laughs> yeah, I don't need <laughs> to ask that. why. I think we know why. Th those are three of the greatest bands ever. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and, and we, you, yeah, exactly. Same goes with Maiden. I mean, Maiden yeah. at that time. You know, my influence as a vocalist was was Robert Plant and Ian Gillen and Paul McCartney. Okay, those are the three. For me, these guys are like a monarchy. But but Dickinson at his best. Oh my lord! What a voice! What a soul! You know, everything was there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so the album comes out in '86, and of course you do the tour w with Metallica. Um, what happens after that? What you know, the, the band you only lasted for two albums. So, so yeah, was it financial pressure? What, what was the Canadian market not supporting you? Was it a personal decision to say, okay, I've had enough, um, or was it just tough in Canada? Because you know, back back in the day, Canada was Brian Adams. Luba, Glass Tiger, Honeymoon Suite. Okay. Great bands yeah. or great artists, but corporate. not but not metal. Yeah, very corporate and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the the the, the easy answer to, to to that question is is all of all of the above, you know, all, all of that that you've mentioned were all factors of of why we only did two albums. So you said um uh, uh, you said the uh, crisis amongst uh, uh, life at home, and you know, you, there's a lot going as factors, but but the main reason for me, I cannot speak for the other members of sort, is that if you go back back in back at uh, the end of the eighties, it will uh, as as we got like from 1985 to 1990, it's either you got heavier. Or you got less heavy, you know. Yeah. There was no, there was no staying there, you know. They, they, something had to happen. So lots of band went for the heavier part, and lots of band went for, for the, the cleaner sound. So, in a way, we tried the cleaner sound because there was no way for me I would go into death metal and that stuff. It's not that I don't like it. It's not that I, that I don't acknowledge, you know, that it's a it's a form of art. But for me, it, it didn't do anything at all so 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 we hired a, 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 a second guitar player uh, when we finished record the the, the, the trouble uh, the, the, the sort sweet dream album right. and, and by hiring, hiring that, that guitar player Mike Plant who had been the main main songwriter for, for the music for sword for 10 years Loved the band, saying, ah, "I gotta go work, find a job, find a real job. This doesn't pay the bills, you know." So, so the new guitar player brought a new sound. So, lots of people said, "Yeah, after Sword, you went and 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 did Saints and Sinners." No, it it all it all fell into place, you know, because once my left and Stefan Dussault became the guitar player, then this it's a sound. That, that came about, you know, it wasn't, it didn't sound like sword anymore. So we couldn't call it sword. We changed the name. So by doing that, the other members left. So we, it was up to Stefan and me. So, so, so we went with Saints and Sinners for a while and toured with, uh, Mo, with, uh, with, um, Bon Jovi and, and uh, a couple of artists here and there. Alice but, Cooper too. Yeah. Alice Cooper. But, but by 1992, then came grunge. And so everybody, 
Yeah, yeah, musicians, artists at that time, especially pop rock artists, were like confused because one day was metal, the other day was glam rock, and then it was all Finnish, and then it became Seattle. Everything that was from Seattle that was grunge was, was in, all the rest was out. Well, that left a lot of people unemployed, believe me. And that left, so said, and that left you unemployed, too. So, so then you... you started singing French music, or, or when did you start getting into the French stuff? Well, when that happened, when the, the grunge period installed itself, <laughs> let's call it like that, uh, I couldn't be a grunge artist, so I, I, I step out. Uh, I step out. I said to the record company who I was signed with, I said, listen, I'm, I want out. I won't do another record. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to go and raise my kids and, and find a job and, and work in Quebec. So that's what I did. And and you know what? Sometimes when when you go through phases like that in your life, it's 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 all it's always it's always fears that stops you from from doing the right thing. Fear was there, believe me. And 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 I but I did it, and and I don't regret it a single minute. You know, I've been working here in Quebec as a hired guns hired gun for for studio sessions for uh, for Broadway shows for. For the Rick Point, for TV shows, I do my own recordings, and, and, and life is great. Life is great. Let, let me go back yeah. here, quickly, back to the 80s. Um, okay. You, you toured with Alice Cooper, and on yep. the second album, Sweet Dreams, you had one of his producers, uh, Jack, Richard, Jack Richardson, uh, take part. Exactly, yeah. Jack, yeah. Jack, let me just give you some credits here for Jack so people know. Uh, Bob Seger's Night Moves. Alice Cooper, Love It to Death, Muscle of Love, He's Done Man of War, Moxie, Badfinger, uh, Guess Who, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a legend. An absolute legend. How was it working with him? And, and is that how come you got the Alice Cooper gig? Or did you get Alice Cooper then, Jack? What, what came first? Uh, Jack came first. And 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 what happened with 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 uh, Jack with uh, the late Jack Richardson, who's been who's been who had passed like uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, two thousand eleven. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mitch. The thing is, is that his son was starting his career. Um, Garth Richardson, great, 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 great producer. You know him, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. From from Rage Against and 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 like countless, countless. Other other bands, yes, other bands. Thanks. So, so th the thing is that when we approached Jack, Jack said, "Yeah, I, I agree to do it if my son's in it with me." So we said, "Yeah, okay." So, and Guy was starting his career. So a couple of, of years after doing our album, he, uh, Gart, on his own, without his dad, done, uh, did the the first uh, Rage Against the Machine, uh, Killing in the Name uh, album. He's producer for that album, so. But but that that's how it came about. We 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 when it came time to do our second album, the record company gave us some um, some margin. They said, okay, who, who do you want to work with? So we 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 started to think outside the box. You know, okay, we're doing metal, but still we're we're our influence are more like Zeppelin esque and, and all of that. So who, who would be the perfect guy for us? And and one of the guys of the band came with Jack Richardson, and, and we had some some of us had to look him up. <laughs> wow. So it was a big chance for us that he said, "Yeah, yeah." It must have been exciting because I mean, you know, a guy who yeah. worked on Muscle of Love and Love It to Death, got to know a little something, right? I mean, that's a great, great. Yeah, he, he, he had that that thing in his eye, you know. It's it, it it was uncanny. But what I remember the most about Jack Richards, and, and that's a, that, that's that is that is strange. Is is when we actually started the project. My brother and I invited him to like a family dinner. So so we had Jack Richardson, the legend, in, in a little country house on the suburb of San Bruno. He was sitting with my my brother and I and and my mom and we and we had spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> that's my biggest memory I have. You know, I worked with him for months doing the album, but that night when he came to my mom's house to have a, a, a spaghetti a, dinner, that was amazing. Wow. <laughs> you can you cannot write that, you know. 
That's a that's a great story. So let, let me ask you the you know one of la, one of the last two questions here. Is there by definition a Canadian metal sound? I mean, when you think of Sword and Helix and Anvil and Killer Dwarves and all those other bands, what makes what makes it Canadian? What what's the Canadian heavy metal sound? Ah, that's a good question, man. That's a good because especially with all the bands that you just mentioned. As you're mentioning them, I'm, I'm hearing the sound and, and it keeps coming back. So, what is that sound? Yeah, there's a Canadian metal sound. Yeah, yeah. there is. Because you know, probably the person that 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 defines it the most for me, at least, is Lee Aaron. You know, wow. metal queen. Yeah, she's the greatest. She's the greatest. <laughs> Watch the sword. I I did a, a couple of gigs with her. She's a cool girl too. Oh, she's a, she's fantastic. I've met her a couple of times. She's very very nice. But it's just because you know when you think of the '80s in the states, you think of hair metal, and when you think of uh, the UK, you think of the new new wave of British heavy metal and and you know Tigers of Pantang and all. That. But when you think of Canadian, do do we have a name? You know, we're we're not hair metal. We're not new wave of British heavy metal. Are is there any kind of something that makes it uniquely Canadian? I don't know, but one thing's for sure is that, like a band like Anvil, who's been doing that for for thirty, forty years, huh? we, we they're they're the best, man. They're the best. We we've done a show with them a couple of years back, a couple of years back. Sword did a show with Anvil in Germany. Wow. And, and the, yeah, in a festival in Germany, it's called a Keep It True Festival. And uh, one night we, we were like the headliner on a Friday. It's a big arena, you know, and they all out. They have all those metal fans from all across Europe coming to that festival. So one night we were headlining, and and Anvil was in line headlining the next night. So we we partied with them on our night, and we partied with them on their night. It was great, man. Lips is the best. That's that's He's the man. best. That's great. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Is anything... You know, Canadians is all we are, right? That if they finished their show, it was in an, an arena, so, so they go in the dressing room, so everybody's around the door, and they're waiting for them to come out, so they want to take pictures and, and, with lips and stuff, and everybody's waiting, and, and like, there's a brouhaha, the door opens, and, and it's, it's, it's the drummer, and he's looking around, he's looking around, and then he sees me, and he sees my plant, you know, my plant from Sword, and he goes, you, you! Come in! <laughs> so we had to, like, make our way through and, and go inside the, close the door, and, and Lips was waiting for me. He said, hey, Ray, quick, come here, Ray, come here. So I was, like, singing. Was it, was it, was it okay? When, I said, Lips, so he was perfect, man. It was good. Everybody was having a good time. Yeah, but I had some hard time with my voice. And you sure it was okay? Yeah, it was fine. And then he had a big smile on his face and said, All right, Jason, let's party. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I know, good, I know. Good old lips. And they, of course, they always play with their, uh, their, their, their dildos and stuff on stage, which is totally ridiculous. I, I did not know that. But oh, you didn't know that? that. He, he does no. a guitar solo and he uses one of those to, you know, to. Go up and down the neck of the guitar. <laughs> he's got props. <laughs> he's got props, exactly. He's got pro he's the carrot my the, the carrot top of uh, of metal. <laughs> yeah, he's the carrot top of metal. Exactly. Is uh <laughs> is is there anything happening with Sword? There, there was talk of a comeback and a live album and all this, or 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 is that sort of on the shelf for now? Well, it's on the shelf, yeah. yeah. The, first, the live album is done. We've recorded that with Motor at, at the Amersmith. It's a great sounding album. But everybody's doing, busy doing their stuff right now. So if one thing, this album's going to come out before new new original material. This this is going to take more time, more effort than, than, than we've put in. When is the live album coming out? This year? Next year? Uh, I don't know. I won't come. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna have to pass on that question. Yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one. It's a tough one. And uh, last, yeah. last question, or, or last thing, I just wanted to say. Uh, you okay. know, you know, last summer we we did. I did this Kiss tribute album called "The World with Heroes," and you came on there and did a song, "The Oath." And you had Chris Buck, who's an up and coming talent, and you worked with uh, Alan Niven of uh, Guns N' Roses fame as a producer. I just wanted to thank you because the version of the song is absolutely fantastic. 
fantastic. I mean, the vocal on that is, is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And it was for a good cause, so I just wanted to thank you for that. Well, Mitch, I accept uh, you, you thanking me, but one thing's for sure is that it was a thrill of a lifetime for me to, one, help your cause, and two, work with Alan Neville and, and, and Chris Buck on that. It was like, wow, I was I was having a great time. Yeah, it was a great, great, great project. So, so Rick, thank Come you. On. Uh, right, as we say in Quebec, merci. And of course, uh, we also say go Habs, go. We throw that in at, at the end of every sentence. So, yeah, right uh, now we're in the uh, series, eh? Yeah, yeah. It is important, as we say. So uh, so thank you, Rick. Oh, <laughs> always a pleasure talking to you. And, yes, you uh, the man, you the man. Merci, as they say. Merci. Well, merci, merci. I'm going to... Uh,